Hi guys, uh, it's Jimmy again here on Friday morning uh, with our walk through the book of Mark. Um, with uh, this today, we're looking at uh, Mark chapter six, verses fourteen through twenty-nine. So before we get into that, I'll just uh, do a quick word of prayer, and then we'll get into God's word. <clears throat> Uh, Lord, thank you for this day. Uh, just thanks for all the blessings you do give us, God. Uh, just help us to learn from you, God. Uh, just uh, be in our hearts, our minds, um, and just uh, mold us and shape us um, just how you would want us. God helps to follow you, and just thanks for your word. Amen. All right, so uh, Mark chapter 6, verses 14 through 29, uh, and then we'll take a look at some uh, questions and uh, and wrap things up after that. Uh, so uh, starts here in verse fourteen. King Herod heard about this for Jesus, a name had become well known. Some were saying John the Pap John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah, and still others claimed he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, the man I beheaded has been raised from the dead? For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod, heard, when Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter, <clears throat> when the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. He, and he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, Herodias answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with this request. With this request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. So a lot uh, going on there. Um, some interesting decisions and uh, a lot of different feelings and emotions going through there. So uh, here's a few follow-up questions to maybe help you meditate and move forward and just to kind of think and ponder what God's Word could be telling us and why such uh, drastic measures and orders and things like that uh, could be could mean so uh, first how do you think Herod viewed John the Baptist <clears throat> what is significant about the death of John the Baptist how and why was Herod swayed into doing something that caused him such distress what can you learn from Herod how can you make sure to avoid the same mistake why is it important to set up boundaries and prepare for challenging, tempting times in advance? What have you learned from personal experience of times that you neglected to prepare for those times? So you can go back and maybe pause at some of those questions and have a chance to just think about them yourself and uh, reflect on um, your life and God's word and uh, what uh, what we can learn from Herod um, and probably all of us I know myself have situations you know similar where we didn't set up boundaries and uh, it didn't uh, uh, you know work out uh, that's part of the reason why we want to have boundaries is that way we know how far 
we'll go. If we never set boundaries, we never know just how far we might go. And as it happened to King Herod, um, he did not have any boundaries set up in his relationship. And he uh, ended up basically killing or murdering a highly respected man, a man he respected, um, just for the approval of uh, his oath and his words. So clearly King Herod has never seen Aladdin. When you grant a wish, you have to include the fact that you can't kill someone, you can't make someone fall in love, and I forget the third thing that uh, Aladdin's genie uh, didn't allow. I think bringing people back from the dead, falling in love, and murdering someone. I think that was it. So uh, we can definitely learn when granting wishes to include those three caveats as well. But um, but anyway, uh, like I said, you can take some time and reflect on uh, just that story and that example from Herod's life where he, again, really had no boundaries and um, ended up in a kind of interesting marriage of his brother's wife as well as uh, having his uh, wife's daughter um, dance for him and his friends and then eventually leading to the decision of killing John the Baptist. Again, uh, as you can see there, without boundaries, one thing led to another um, and uh, that's uh, the importance of boundaries and um, just knowing what God's promises are and expectations and how um, we need to know those before we get into a situation so we know what we're trying to um, follow and not go too far in the wrong direction as we saw here. So again, take some time to reflect on those for yourself um, and uh, <clears throat> we'll pray here and that will wrap things up so uh, again Lord thank you God for who you are Lord uh, thanks for your love for us Lord that you sent your only son um, God help us just to set boundaries and um, just to know your word God uh, having your word in our hearts and in our minds uh, Lord is a huge part of uh, just knowing um, what we want to do how we want to act um, and how far we would go with any kind of decision or uh, things of that nature. God, and I just pray that we would seek you in any decisions, uh, big or small. God, you want to be a part of it all. Um, and just thank you that uh, you love us and, uh, and for being interested in all that we do, God. Lord, we love you and uh, just lift this uh, day up to you. Amen. All right, thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll see you again next Monday, continuing through the book of Mark. Have a great weekend.